Welcome back to Hot Takes. This is where you send in your spiciest opinions and two people from Football Daily, this week it's me and Chris, react to them and give our opinions in return. Nice little serving there. Good, ser good summary. Give and take. A whole picture. Give and you shall receive. The first hot take was submitted by Petar Kolic. Peter Kolic, I think that might be one. He says, Modric is the second best player in the world. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe this year. But I think a lot of people are hopping on the I want to see someone but Messi and Ronaldo win the Ballon d'Or Modric bandwagon. You know what? He's been the best player in that Real Madrid midfield three for the last five years. Where were you then? Ooh. Where are you now that I need you? <sighs> Defensive midfielder. I think... He's definitely in the top 10 for the Ballon d'Or shortlist. The top 10! Or the best. Uh, let's say top five then. Maybe top 10 was harsh. But Kylian Mbappe, is he more likely to win it than Luka Modric, a.k.a. David Gale? Probably. I don't need to go into his stats. Superb. Head over to one of our most serious strands if you'd like to know actual information. What do you think? Uh, I think he is the third best player in the world right now. I think Lionel Messi... Obviously, the GOAT, he is number one, the best player in the world. Cristiano Ronaldo coming in a close, close second mm. after winning his third Champions League on the bounce. I think Luka Modric was in with a shout of the Ballon d'Or had he won the World Cup, but he didn't. He didn't win it. He finished second, and yes, he did take the golden ball. He probably was the best player in the entire competition, alongside maybe N'Golo Kante, but I just don't think he's quite there. And let's face it, the Ballon d'Or always goes to a mother... Oh, well, that's what I wanted to say, Joe. Kante, Kevin De Bruyne, has he been any better than them this season, apart from in the international tournaments, wherein Kante was in fact France's best player, did win the Champions League, yeah. you're right. But part of a Real Madrid team that finished with a Awful very low points tally. Point tally. The worst in 12 years. Just crossing each other's lines now, can never let me speak. Well, because you didn't know the stat, did you? You didn't know off. the stat, did you? Well, you didn't let me get there, did yeah, you? Yeah, you didn't know it. You f Pinhead. <laughs> <laughs> Next one was sent in by Jason Stockwell. He says Wolves could get into the top six this season. Jason to Stockwell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Stockers. I mean, it's not a great tube station and it's not a great opinion either. Stockwell, what are you thinking here? Okay, Wolves have signed pretty well, but we've seen clubs come up and be promoted and make good signings in the past and flop <coughs> QPR. But I do think Wolves' signings have been better than QPR's, so I'm expecting fairly good things from them. I'm not expecting a top six finish. I think the average points total to get into the top six is over mm. 60. If Wolves get over 60, I would be extremely shocked. I think the signings they've made are good for a mid-table side, and they'll probably finish between 12th and 8th. And that is something to be Ooh. proud of. I think that would also be overperforming. Yeah, they're yet to sign Esteban Granero on 80k a week, so that's always a good start. Yeah. Ruben Neves has Champions League experience. Diego Jota has Champions League experience. Raul Jimenez. Raul Jimenez, good young Mexican. And you know, you need Mexicans, not Mexicans in your team. And let's not forget about Rui Patricio because that is actually a mean signing. Rui Patricio, I like. What was that, Patricio? Patricio. Patricio. Pronunciation has gone down. Jao. Mario, also Portuguese, doesn't play for them. João Martinho is the Ooh, one they've yeah. signed for five million, which I think is a very savvy piece of business. I don't know what he's doing going from Monaco to the black country. Say what he's doing. Jorge Mendes is bidding. Uncle Jorge is called. Every Portuguese player must be sat at home <laughs> themselves, waiting for a call. Don't call me Jorge. The phone Jorge goes. Mendes no! saying, yeah. I'm in the black country. Wolverhampton. That's a location in England, by the way. <laughs> The next one was sent in by JJ. He says Tottenham won't win any trophies this year because of their complacency. And Kane will leave before 2020. Right, I take it by complacency. JJ means an inactivity in the transfer market. He's got it. Which is okay, fair enough. But I do sympathise with Pochettino because he's already got a very well-rounded squad. And in order to improve that team significantly, they'd have to make sort of a Manchester United, Manchester City-esque signing, yes. wouldn't they? We spoke about it on Sunday Vibes. 
which is out tomorrow, which was filmed on Thursday. Tiago Alcantara might be that man, but there's a host of clubs in for him already, isn't there? The only area I can see them improving because they've already got a great goalkeeper, a great defence with still more to come from the likes of Davinson Sanchez and an absolute world beater up front in Harry Kane, along with two second strikers who can chip them 10 to 15 goals in Dele Alley and Son. So the only area they can still improve on is midfield and possibly losing Dembele opens up a bit of fundage, let's say, for a box-to-box -box midfielder. He might be going to Italy. And, you know, we've often said Kovacic could be that person, but again, are they gonna pay 50 to 60 million to prize him away from Real Madrid? Possibly more, potentially not. Spurs need to decide whether they want to double down on winning the league with this current crop of players and this very talented manager, or if they just want to be a Champions League club. Because they've found stability. And I agree, the next step's gonna be hard. Yeah, to say they won't win any trophies may be a little bit harsh. I think they do stand a very Carabao. good- uh, <laughs> They do stand a very good chance of winning a cup competition. I don't think they're gonna win the Premier League. I don't see them clawing about that massive points gap on Manchester City, but I don't think anybody will. So maybe to say it's because of complacency is a little bit harsh. However, I do agree they need signings. As for the point on Harry Kane leaving by 2020, I would be very surprised. <laughs> Especially seen as this summary signed a five-year contract worth £200,000 a week and it runs till 2023. So if that happens and he cuts it three years short, you are going to see a world record transfer over £300 million. Because Daniel Levy is a notoriously bastard negotiator. Let's face it, he's the Duncan Bannertine of football. So I don't think Kane will leave before 2020, I'm um, afraid to say. And for that reason, I'm out. I'm out too. The next one was sent in by Yasser Kervantev. He says Chelsea have the best midfield in the Premier League. What do you mean? Oh, it depends. Does he mean central midfield talent? I believe he does because he has mentioned Kante, Jorginho, RCS. Which I'm totally on board it's with. RLC as well. Because, like you said, they have those players mm. and also Bakioko, Cesc Fabregas, and other very capable players like Ruben Loftus-Cheek waiting in the wings. Fabregas was creating 4.5 chances per 90 Ooh. last season for crying out loud. Jorginho is the clincher here. This is a guy who often completes over 100 passes per game. They needed a controller at the base of midfield, maybe to free up Kante, to carry on being that guy who transitions out of the fence because he's definitely added that to his game in the last 18 months. Scampering up the pitch. The little legend, love him. Love his tiny head. Just want to kiss it. And who else was in that midfield? Um, Barkley, Drinkwater, Fabregas. I'm not even mentioned Ross Barkley or Drinkwater, but CBA. Who was the other one that he mentioned in the, in the, in the lineup? He said RCL, but it's actually RLC, Ruben Loftus Cheek. Anyway, uh, I think I've proved my point. You, you go. Uh, I think it's a bit of a close one. I think that Chelsea have the best. Midfield in terms of stability, but I think Manchester City have the best midfield in terms of attacking talent. I think Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Bernardo Silva and Ilkay Gundogan eclipse Chelsea going forward, but Jorginho, Kante, Bakayoko, uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Ethan Ampadu, Danny Drinkwater, Barkley eclipse it going backwards. Names. Just names of footballers. So, I'm expecting big things from Chelsea under Sarri because that midfield is stable as a Horse? Doesn't really work, horse. but horse is stable, isn't it? <laughs> Last one! RSMC, brackets team, 100 emoji, brackets, says... Sort Adam, your name out! Adam Sandler is a good actor. L. <laughs> Shambles! Should have anticipated that sort of question from that sort of handle. You know what, I... There has been a few very good Adam Sandler films. Name of not other, other the than last, the longest yard. Not in the last 10, 15 years. It's all been downhill from the longest yard, and I think the longest yard was 2006. And if you've got that wrong, then go f yourself, all right? Because that is obscure knowledge. However, I will never see a worse film than Click. Wedding Singer, good film. 50 First Dates, charming. Big Daddy, good film. Anger Management, not bad. Click. Kick. That's a that's click. A that's a different. The man click. clicked the remote. For a, an hour and a half. I think Jack and Jill w was yeah, his. Oh, Jesus, Jack and Jill's had me off. Jack and Jill was his nadir. Jack and Jill. He's, he's, he's gone. Just. The Netflix contract ruined you, Adam.
I was probably out of focus then. The Netflix contract ruined you, Adam. So that's it for Hot Takes for yet another week. If you want to be involved in the future, you can tweet us your spiciest opinions on like a Wednesday or a Thursday, whenever you really fancy, with the hashtag Hot Takes. Hammer, what else is happening on FD Network? Oh, why don't you go and check out Stat Wars the Champions on Euro Football Daily, and then why don't you sit in your chair afterwards and wait 12 hours for Sunday Vibes to come out, staring at nothing but the wall. Or the comment show. Made by Kri Kieran Carlin. Kieran. Kieran. Kieran yeah, It's on screen. That's ironic because he Watch also it. has a speech impediment.